Hello, boys and girls. My name is Mr. Fox, and I'm here at Linda Elementary School in Linda, California. And today I'm going to read a book entitled John Henry by Julius Lester, and pictures are by Jerry Pickney. You have probably never heard of John Henry, or maybe you heard about him, but don't know the ins and outs of his comings and goings. Well, that's why I'm going to tell you all about him. When John Henry was born, birds came from everywhere to see him. The bears and the panthers and the moose and the deer and rabbits and squirrels and even a unicorn came out of the woods to see him. Instead of the sun tending to his business and going to bed, it was peeping out from behind the moon, trying to get a glimpse of the new baby. There he is in his uh, cradle. Actually, he's under the cradle, lifting it up. Before long, the mama and papa came out on the porch to show off their brand new baby. The birds ooed and the animals awed at how handsome the baby was. Somewhere in the middle of one of the oos, or maybe it was on the backside of one of the ahs, that baby jumped out of his mama's arms and started growing. He grew and grew and grew. He grew until his head and shoulders busted through the roof, which was over the porch. John Henry thought that was the funniest thing in the world. He laughed so loud the son got scared. The scurry from behind the moon skirts and went to bed which is where it should have been all the while. And here we go. Here's a picture of the family, and he's starting to grow. The bears are there. The moose is there. The jaguar is there. Oh, my, the spirit horses uh, that we uh, call a unicorn is there. Birds are there. It's an amazing adventure getting ready to start. The next morning, John Henry was up at sunrise. The sun wasn't. He was tired and had decided to sleep in. John Henry wasn't going to have none of that. He hollered up into the sky. Get up from there. I got to get things to do and I need light to do them by. The sun yawned, oh, washed his face flossed and brushed its teeth and hurried up over the horizon. That day, John Henry helped his pa rebuild a porch he had busted through, added a wing onto the house with an indoor swimming pool and one of them jacuzzis. After lunch, he chopped down an acre of trees and split them into fireplace logs and still had time for a nap before supper. Wow, that boy is busy. Look at him go through that tree. The next day, John Henry went to town. He met up with the meanest man in the state, Ferret Face Freddy, sitting on his big white horse. You know what he was doing? He was thinking of mean things to do. Ferret Face Freddy was so mean. He cried if he had a nice thought. John Henry said, Freddy, I'll make you a bet. Let's have a race. You on your horse and me on my legs. If you and your horse win, you can work me as hard as you want for a whole year. If I win, you'll have to be nice for a year. Ferret-faced Freddy laughed 
an evil laugh. It's a deal, John Henry. His voice sounded like bat wings on a tombstone. And here we are with John Henry talking to Ferret Face Freddy. The next morning, folks lined up all along the way the race would go. John Henry was ready. Ferret Face Freddy and his horse were ready. Bang, the race was on. My great-granddaddy's brother's cousin, sister-in-law's uncle, aunt, was there that morning. She said everybody saw Ferret Face Freddy ride by his on his big white horse, and they were sure enough moving. Did anybody notice to see John Henry? That's because he was so fast. The wind was out of breath trying to keep up with him. When Ferret Face Freddy crossed the finish line, John Henry was already on the other side, sitting in a rocking chair and drinking soda. After that, Ferret Face Freddy was so nice, everybody called him Frederick the Friendly. John Henry decided it was time for him to go on down the big road. He went home and told his mom and daddy goodbye. His daddy said, you got to have something to make your way in the world with, son. These belong to your granddaddy. And he gave him two 20-pound sledgehammers with four-foot handles made of whalebone. A day or two later, so John Henry saw a crew building a road. At least that's what they were doing until they came on a boulder right smack dab where the road was supposed to go. This was no ordinary boulder. It was as hard as an angry and so big around it took a half a week for a tall man to walk from one side to the other. Boy, there's that big rock he's talking about. And we can't get through till that thing's out of the way. John Henry offered to lend them a hand. That's all right. We'll put some dynamite to it. John Henry smiled to himself. Whatever you say. The road crew plant, planted dynamite all around the rock and set it off. Kerboom, blamity, blamity, bloom, boom, bang, bloom, bang. The, live, the dynamite made so much racket, the Almighty looked over the parapets of heaven and hollered. It's getting too noisy down there. The dynamite kicked up so much dirt and dust it got dark. The moon thought night had caught her napping, and she hurried out so fast. She was almost bumping into the sun, who was still climbing steep hill toward noontime. When all the commotion from the dynamite was over, the road crew was amazed. The boulders was still there. Uh, in fact, the dynamite had not knocked even a chip off of it. The crew didn't know what to do then they heard a rumbling noise they looked around it was john henry laughing he said if you gentlemen would give me a little room i got some work to do don't see how you could do what dynamite couldn't said the boss of the crew john henry chuckled just watch me John Henry chuckled. Just watch me. He swung one of his hammers round and round his head. It made such a wind that leaves blew off the trees and birds fell out of the sky. Ring! The hammer hit the boulder. That boulder shivered like you do on a cold winter morning when it looks like the school bus is never going to come. Ring! The boulder shivered like the morning when freedom came to the slaves. John Henry picked up his other hammer. 
he swung one hammer in a circle over his head. As soon as it hit the rock, ring, the hammer in his left hand started to make a circle and ring and soon ring and of one hammer followed by the ring of the other hammer. And uh, so close it sounded like they were falling at the same time. Ring, 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 ring. And as we go across there, we see him hitting those boulders there with that great big huge 20 pound sludge hammer that belonged to his grandfather. There's the other one right there. My, he's going after that boulder. It's really something. Chips and dust were flying from the boulder so fast that John Henry vanished from sight. But you could still hear his hammer ring, ring. The air screen seemed to be dancing to the rhythm of his hammers. The boss of the road crew looked up. His mouth dropped open. He pointed into the sky. There, in the air above the boulder, was a rainbow. John Henry was swinging the hammer so fast he was making a rainbow around his shoulders. It was shining and shimmering in the dust and grit like hope that never dies. John Henry started singing. I got a rainbow ring ring. I tried tied around my shoulder. It ain't gone to rain. No, it ain't gone to rain. Well, that was kind of my rendition of that song anyway. And here everybody is watching him working. And if you look carefully, right up here, you can see that rainbow made out of the dust. And all the workers are just standing around watching. And, and they are amazed at what's going on here. John Henry sang and he hammered and the air danced and the rainbow shimmered and the earth shook and the rolling from the blows of the hammer finally went quiet. Slowly the dust cleared. Folks could not believe their eyes. The boulder was gone. In its place was the prettiest and straightest road they had ever seen. Not only had John Henry pulverized the boulder into pebbles, he had finished building the road. In the distance where the new road connected to the main one, the road crew saw John Henry waving goodbye, a hammer on each shoulder, the rainbow draped around him like love. There's that beautiful road now. Look at that. It looks like a pebble rock beautiful road and there's John Henry and he's waving goodbye see you later he's saying John Henry went on his way he had heard that any man good with a hammer could find work building the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad through West Virginia that was where he had been going when he stopped to build the road. The next day, John Henry arrived at the railroad. However, work had stopped. The railroad tracks had to go through a mountain and such a mountain. Next to it, even John Henry felt small. But a worker told John Henry about a new machine they were going to use to tunnel through the mountain. It was called a steam drill. It can hammer faster and harder than 10 men, and it never has to stop and rest. The next day, the boss arrived with the steam engine drill. John Henry said to him, Let's have a contest. Your steam drill against me and my hammers. The man laughed. I've heard you were the best there ever was, John Henry. But even you can't outhammer a machine. Let's find out, John Henry answered. Boss shrugged. Don't make me. No, never mind. You start on the other side of the mountain, 
and I'll start the steam drill over here. And whoever gets to the middle is the first winner. Well, here he is talking to the boss. And the boss says, you try it out. Be okay with me. Now, folks, check out that stream steam drill there. It's run on hot water. It has a boiler inside, and they feed it wood, and it burns and gets hot and makes steam, and it runs that drill. And here's everybody on this side of the mountain uh, watching to see what's going to happen uh, as they get ready to start drilling. The next morning, all was still. The birds weren't singing and the roosters weren't crowing. When the son did hear the roosters, he wondered if something was wrong. So he rose up a couple of minutes early to see. What he saw was a mountain as big as hurt feelings. On one side was big machine hooked up to hor horses. It was belching smoke and steam. As the machine attacked the mountain, rocks and dirt and underbrush flew into the air. On the other side was John Henry. Next to the mountain, he didn't look much bigger than a wish that wasn't going to come true. He had a 20 pound hammer in each hand and muscles hard as wisdom in each arm. As he swung them through the air, they shone like silver. And when the hammer hit the rock, they rang like gold. Before long, tongues of fire leaped out with each blow. Let's take a moment and look at this big mountain that they're going to drill through. And the people with the drillers are on this side over here. You can see the steam from the locomotive that they use as a drill press. And here's that mountain. And over on the other side here, you're going to find a man with two great big huge mallets and sledgehammer type and he's getting ready to get into that rock. On the other side, the boss of the steam drill felt the mountain shudder. He got scared and hollered. I believe this mountain's caving in. From the darkness inside the mountain came a deep voice. It's just my hammer sucking wind. Just my hammer sucking wind. There wasn't enough room inside the tunnel for the rainbow, so it wrapped itself around the mountain on the side where John Henry was. Boy, look at him go. John Henry was a steel driving man. Well, here they are, working to that steel uh, drill. Uh, steam's all up and charged up. Although, all through the night, John Henry and the steam drill went at it. In the light from the tongue of the fire shooting out of the tunnel from John Henry's hammer blows, folks could see the rainbow wrapped around the mountain like a shaw. The sun came up early the next morning to see who was winning. Just as it did, John Henry broke through and met the steam drill. The boss of the steam drill was flabbergasted. John Henry had come a mile and a quarter. The steam drill had only come a quarter. And there he is. He's wiping his brow and he's caught the drill. There's John Henry with those large sledgehammers. People are watching. The rainbows around him. Folks were cheering and yelling, John Henry, John Henry. John Henry walked out of the tunnel into the sunlight, raised his arms over his head, a hammer in each hand. The rainbow slid off the mountain and around his shoulders. 
With a smile, John Henry's eyes closed and slowly fell to the ground. John Henry was dead. He had hammered so hard and so fast and so long that his big heart had bursted. Everybody was silent for a moment. Then came the sound of soft crying. Some said it came from the moon. Another one said she saw the sun shed a tear. Then something strange happened. Afterwards, folks swore the rainbow whispered it. I don't know. But whether it was a whisper or a thought, everyone had the same knowing at the same moment. Dying ain't important. Everybody does that. What matters is how well you do your living. First one person started clapping, then another, and then another, and then soon everybody was clapping. The next morning, the sun got everybody up early to say goodbye to John Henry. They put him on a flatbed railroad car, and the train made its way slowly out of the mountain. All along the way, folks lined bo both inside of the tracks, and they were cheering and shouting through their tears. John Henry, John Henry. John Henry's body was taken to Washington, D.C. You see the train going there? And there it is. There's John Henry's casket on the train. Some say he was buried on the White House lawn late one night while the president and Mrs. President was asleep. I don't know none about that. What I do know is this. If you walk by the White House late at night, and stand real still and listen real closely, folks say you might just hear a deep voice singing. Ah, oh God, it's a rainbow, ring, ring, tied around my shoulders, ring, ring. It ain't gonna rain, no, it ain't gonna rain, ring, ring. I'm Mr. Fox, and I'm here at Linda Elementary School in beautiful Linda, California. <laughs>